And also the former Japanese star uh, KJ Matsui. And uh, we also have numerous colleagues around uh, here in this uh, Yokohama City Arena in various languages. Uh, that was not us. Uh, we're doing it remotely. And here we are again looking uh, at this exciting environment in Yokohama City. Uh, Josh Bitt, uh, it's been a wild ride uh, to this point of the season, uh, but I don't think there's any question that these two teams deserve to be here. Well, also joining us today uh, is KJ Matsui, uh, the former uh, Japan professional, also played his college basketball in America at Columbia. We're looking forward to KJ's uh, insightful comments. And uh, KJ played professionally here in Japan for, uh, well, uh, played for Hitachi Sunrockers, Toyota Alvark, uh, Seahorses Mikawa, and, and Kyoto. And... Uh, very uh, warm welcome to KJ. Well, there you see the the path to the, the final to the for final both of these teams, Ufanamiya, Rex, and Chiba Jets. And Chiba Jets, boy, they had the, a real scare, a real scare in, their in their last uh, uh, showdown, showdown going up against going Ryuku, up against Golden, Ryuku Kings. Golden Kings. Uh, but Chiba uh, Jets uh, getting that fantastic, fantastic uh, shot uh, from that man right there that everybody knows, Yuki Togashi, ended up getting a four-point play. Josh Duncan has been terrific. Uh, and well, that in fact, that was the quarterfinals, and then in, in the semifinals, uh, this Chiba Jets team uh, just really lowered the boom in that first game against the Ryuko Golden Team. You saw the dunks from Gavin Edwards, uh, co flipping came out and became a major factor in X Factor. Josh, a lot of, a lot of interesting developments for this team as they as they progress through the uh, through the playoffs to get to this point. Yeah, of course, Jeff. I mean, we looked at Yuki Togashi. Of course, we've seen him play for the Japanese national team at the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers. And for me, he's arguably the best point guard in the B-League. But as you mentioned, Ko Flippin really stepping up in that first game. Now, the Ryoki Golden Kings, they did a good job in game two. But in the end, Chiba Jets, they proved to everybody that they deserve to be in, in the final. そうですね、ま、本当にこの長いシーズン、ここに来るためにえ、チームとしてやってきてるので、ま、ようやくこの舞台でえ、戦えることもちろん嬉しいですし、え、しっかり2勝できる準備はできてるかなという風に思います。この
Well, KJ, I know that you've had a chance to watch uh, some of this basketball as well. You know, what do you think about Utsunomiya uh, coming out in this game uh, today, having swept their semifinal and going up against a, a pretty good Chiba Jets team? I think they're going to be really, really uh, defensive uh, まずはこのファイナル、意気込みはいかがですかそうですね、あのチーム全員でここまで積み重ねてきたので、最後、2勝できるように、まずは今日、全員で挑みたいと思います。今回、勝負のポイントはいかがですか、はい、あの千葉さんは非常に攻撃力のあるチームですので、えー、自分たちのディフェンスからしっかり入って40分間、自分たちのバスケットをやり通したいと思います。So back to that point you were making, uh, KJ, about Utsunomiya yeah. Brex and, uh, and Chiba Jets. Yes, uh, Brex is going to be, you know, they have a lot of size, uh, a lot of physicality. Uh, they're trying to probably pressure Togashi as much as they can and try to wear him down offensively. Uh, that's their strategy. And for Chiba, I think they want to get stopped and rebound and try to push and then fast pace as much as possible and hopefully Togashi is going to feel great from the beginning of the game. Well, you see the roster there for Chiba Jets and Co-Flippin again the X-Factor uh, Josh Duncan number one, Togashi two, Co-Flippin uh, number four, uh, Taguchi number five, Akahu hasn't played that much in the semifinals. He's also a weapon number six. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Nishimura coming off the bench, number 11 at point guard. Shannon Shorter, boy, we, we haven't really spoken much about him. He is a weapon. Uh, comes out uh, for the big moments. Takuma Sato, you got to love his defense at number 14. And uh, Ujinaga again coming off the bench, another weapon. Gavin Edwards needs no introduction at 21. Just does a little bit of everything. The uh, naturalized player. From America, Seba Seiss uh, just has jumping jacks for legs. I mean, he really crashes the offensive boards. He wears number 22. And Shudahara, of course, number 31 uh, for Coach Atsushi Ono. And uh, here, uh, Josh, why don't you run us down some of these players uh, for this Utsunomi Utsunomiya Brex team? Well, Jeff, the key player to look out for is, as we mentioned, the promising player of Kai Tebs. Now, Kai Tebs, I'll be coming from a basketball family. His father being American, mother being Japanese. But, you know, he has been around basketball in Japan for his whole life. He tried to go to America, tried to play in the NCAA system, but no doubt he will be ready for this game. Now, the key player to look out for is that man there. Off a pick and pop, he is going to be very deadly, and that is Ryan Roster. Now, Ryan Roster, having featured already for Japan at the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers, he is one to look out for. And as we already saw at number 40 in the interviews, his contribution is going to be heavily relied on and that is Yuta Tabuse. Yuta Tabuse obviously is one of the primetime players so it's a mix of youth, we've got a dominant player as well and we've got some better years it's a very very tough Utsunomiya Brex team well, I suppose uh, one advantage uh, that these teams have KJ is that a lot of these uh, players have, have played in the in these big moments uh, before uh, do you see an advantage uh, for either team uh, in that respect? I'll throw that one to either KJ or to Josh. Well, of course, Jeff. I mean, it's, it's a very, very tough matchup, of course, you know. And I think, as you mentioned before, Utsunami and Brex coming into this game, they've had a very, very easy run in the playoffs. They haven't been challenged, but this is the finals now. And the Chiba Jets, we saw that they're a team that could turn it up one night and could be a different team the other night. This could be the night that they turn it up and play very, very well, and they could cause a lot of problems. We will find out. Well, we'll let you enjoy the, the opening ceremonies as the lights have been lowered here in Yokohama City.
Of course, those are the mascots for Chiba Jets on the left and the Bricks on the right. Do you know these guys personally, KJ? <laughs> uh, I don't know this Kabuki uh, guy, but I know the mascots very well. Uh, you know, when I stretch away games, the mascots always try to hang out and then try to make jokes around me. So they are very unique characters, mascots. They're trying to get they're trying to get you off your game at least. Yes, like yes. Mascot, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I guess every other team's mascots have to do. I guess that's their job. Ozu,いずれもスパドルマシキコソンアンドティーを廃止超越四国リージョンジマする。KJ, feel free uh, whenever you hear something of relevance to let us know. Okay. <laughs> he is intro introducing himself and then very welcome uh, to this arena. But in very, very polite way. Uh, the basic language that I don't really use nowadays. And last season, because of COVID, uh, there were no championships. And this is, this is the finals that everyone's waiting for. And I came here to support these two teams in finals. And because of everybody's support, uh, we have this finals at this day. And teams that will face each other are Utsunomiya Brex, they were undefeated in playoffs, championship rounds, and the league's best record. And this is the third time in finals, and this year is the year that they really want to win, is Chiba Jets. That's right, Utsunomiya Brex have already won it once. Yes. Well, certainly the mascots did not seem uh, frightened. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now is now is the finals going to begin. Well, this uh, this opening ceremony is both uh, exciting and here I say almost apocalyptic at times, but it's uh, it's all on now, folks. I mean, this is. This is exciting stuff here in Yokohama City and a fitting conclusion for what has been a, uh, a terrific Sealy uh, campaign which our friend uh, also commented on the fact that we had to deal with the COVID pandemic you know, we've had attendance in half. But here's the starters that have been listed uh, for this Chiba Jets team. Josh Duncan, Takashi, Sato, and KJ, I, I would like to hear your thoughts about Sato and why he's in the starting lineup at some point. Uh, okay. I'm assuming it has something to do with defense. Save a size. We all know about what he does on the boards, uh, but also brings a lot of offense to Spain International. And then, of course, uh, big uh, number 30, 31, Shutahara. Yes, uh, Sato is a very uh, long, athletic uh, young player that joined Chiba this year. Uh, he can defend 
one through three positions. So I I think he's gonna be matched with Endo or other wing players. And also that uh, he's very good three-point shooter. So he has basically three and D and very, very uh, good fit for Chiba Jets. Number nine, Number one, two, Ryan. Number two, Stacy, Ryan Rossiter. Number forty, Josh Scott. Give it up one more time for And perhaps uh, in some of the past games, I would have thought that Chiba Jets had, had quite an advantage. Josh, uh, maybe in the depth department. I don't know that that will be an advantage today against this Brex team. No, you're right, Jeff. I mean, the size of Utsunomiya Brex is going to be a problem because, as you mentioned, so players, LJ Peak and Josh Scott, they like to play very, very physical. Uh, also in that lineup, there's some good uh, shooters in there, as we mentioned, along with Ryan Ross. Now, Makoto Hiyajima, for me, is one of the best shooters in the Japanese league. We've also seen it internationally. So this Utsunami and Brex team, they can play physical, they can play big, but they can also play very wide, they can stretch the floor, they can shoot the ball very well from the perimeter. We've seen that time and time again. Well, you just heard him say it's go time as again we look at the starting lineups uh, for both of these teams. Tagashi. Another player who uh, uh, lives for that big moment. Scott Scott, it's going to be an in intriguing matchup down low. Uh, with both size and Duncan. Well, hello everybody and welcome once again. This is game one of the Nisei B-League uh, Finals. Chiba Jets winning that opening tip and attacking the basket to the right. And the first shot goes up and the first shot is good from Shudahara. Jeff, you can see already the defense having a lot of problems trying to contain you. So Gash, he is going to cause a lot of problems in the backcourt. They've got to figure out how to defend him tonight. Now the shot from the perimeter and the attempt from Rossiter was off uh, the back of the iron. Now Tagashi pulls up, doesn't hesitate. How about that? Two threes to start things off. That's great stuff for Chiba Jets. They got the star. Uh, Togashi is made first shot, and team is really rolling right now. A Rossiter with his second miss. Josh Duncan collects the rebound. Shudahara comes out, now he drives in, takes it right to the rim, and right at Josh Scott. Well, there was a fumble there, Jeff. I mean, Utsunami and Brex have to be a lot better. They've got to come up with a loose ball because they got to try and get on the break as much as possible. Poor defense there from the Brex. Ikaruga mm. banks it in. Finally, hopefully uh, for the Sonomiya fans, that's going to settle them down. I mean, that's a very good move and also take advantage of the size and physicality. Uh, Ikaruga and Endo's are a lot bigger and physical compared to Togashi, so if they attack inside the paint, it's likely to score. Uh, but so far, Chiba Jets getting pretty much anything they want. This time, save a size. And uh, KJ, I guess uh, from that standpoint, uh, if they're getting looks down low, uh, that is worrisome for the Brex. Yes, I think so. Uh, they got to attack inside, but also they cannot be too passive. Uh, Chiba doesn't hesitate to shoot any open shots. 
Uh, so they had to first get some stops. Well, Tagashi steps back, passes to Sato. Well, Tagashi again kind of fumbles the basketball right as the shot clock was expiring and has to put up a prayer. So finally, a good sequence there, uh, Josh, for Utsunomi on defense. Yeah, that's the thing about Utsunomi at Brex. Sometimes they can play a little bit of a frustration defense towards Chiba Jets. We know that Yuki Togashi is going to try and force everything through himself. So if they can try and frustrate him in the backcourt, can sometimes force him into a bad shot. Oh, pulling his way down low uh, was LJP and putting his body on Sato. I thought there was an elbow to the face right here. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, not Sato. That was on uh, Shudahara. And well spotted, Josh. I think that one uh, was That's missed. an offensive foul. And that's not was that was not on the shooting foul. Well, if there's one thing you say about Kudahara, you don't question his toughness, that's for sure, and he's showing it right now. And uh, the miss size flicks one of the many rebounds, no doubt, that he's going to get today. Size has been a double double machine in points and rebounds for Chiba Jets. Entry pass down low to Sice. He kind of fades away. And much better defense from Rex that time. I think when the Rex switch off with the little guards, the bigs a very good job staying and not fouling uh, the, the quicker guards of uh, Jets. So Josh Scott will uh, go to the free throw line. And he'll be shooting right uh, at the basket here with all those Chiba Jets fans uh, trying to put him off of his shot, which it appears they may have done in that first attempt. So he gets one of two. And Chiba Jets uh, still with a considerable advantage here at the start of the game, nearly four minutes in. Trying to lengthen that lead. Duncan gets it over to Sato, wide open. And boy, that was a big time rebound by Josh Scott. Now quickly, Rex, push it, and here's LJP oh. going strong. Jeff, that's the style of Utsunomi and Brex need to play. They need to pick up the tempo because, again, we're up against, they're up against a very high tempo team. Trying to get in fast break will do them a lot of good here in the early stages. Size. Oh, boy. Oh, has it knocked away from him. Rossiter. And then on the break. And Josh Scott ran the floor well. JJ turning defense to offense. Yeah, that's what uh, Utsunomiya is supposed to be playing. Very good defense, uh, pressing the ball, bump every time, and then create easy basket. Now right back in the game. You know, if I've got one issue so far with Chiba Jets, what they're doing so far is save a size, perhaps putting the ball on the deck a little bit too much, maybe forcing things. Here's Tagashi, boy, forcing him into a tough shot as well was Ikaruga. And you can see that the Brecks are now wide awake. Rossiter hands it off. Now Pete and mm. Brecks have tied it at 10. Boy, that lead didn't last long. Well, Jeff, that was very good. Yeah. Over there. Yes, Go ball movement. Yeah, that was a great ball movement, execution, uh, great rhythm. I think that's what the shot went in because it was team offense. Size travels and gives it back to the bricks. And, and really a tough game, uh, a tough start for Sabah's size. He 
he's going to come out of the game and Gavin Edwards is going to replace him. Rossiter guarded by Edwards. He's Aruga. Into the paint. Oh, he gets met at the rim by Shannon Shorter, who has also checked into the game. That was a big time play from Shorter. Sato over to Tagashi. Oh, uh, look at him share the basketball. And Gavin Edwards follows up his own miss. Then he has it knocked out of his hands by Pete. Peek from the left corner, falls down. His attempt goes off the top of the backboard. Now Shannon Shorter and tries to get it up. This is the foul is committed, but they're going to say that was before the shot. And I don't know about you, Josh, but I, it seems to me that the intensity level of this game is at a, a, a very different level uh, to what we saw in the semifinals. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, this is the final, as you mentioned. Both teams are going to come bring their A games. But, you know, Jeff, i got to say, the one thing that me and uh, Kajiro spotted in the last play with Utsunami and Brex, you watch the way Ryan Rossler plays. Very simple basketball. will set a pick, get it back, but try and find an open shooter. The difference with the Chiba Jets, everything is running through the backboard. Everything is much isolation basketball. Two teams, two different philosophies. Yeah, this time a little bit of miscommunication, but again, that tough defense meeting Shannon Shorter right as he got into the lane. I'll tell you what, the, the physicality in this game is, uh, is obvious, and you might, you might want to think about bringing some body armor to the next one because they are letting them play. Ryan Rossiter out to peak, and look at that. Another example, Kevin Edwards gets up on peak, and I... Uh, the contact and he falls out of bounds. No foul was called. Jeff, why has the screen been set towards the baseline? They got to set it towards the middle. Well, JP's got nowhere to go if he's going to that baseline. They got to draw him into a double team. It's and Brex have to get the spacing right on offense. That's a great point too, Josh. I think the the ball screen has to be a little to more elbow area to have more space for Edge Peak to go attack. Step back, Shannon shorter and. He misses, but what I'm noticing is that the Brex defense is really getting hands up, hands in the faces, not giving away any cheap shots here on their last few possessions, Chiba Jets. Watanabe has come into the game. Renori Watanabe, uh, number 13, a point guard. He's running the baseline. Also, Kai Tev. Kai Tebbs is in the game number seven. Mm. But it's another three-pointer, and this time the Brex have taken the lead. And it was Makoto Hiyajima, uh, the Japan international. And I'll tell you what, if they've had a nervous start, uh, it certainly did not knock them out of their stride. They have come back impressively. It was just one single uh, simple ball screen with Jeff and Hijima, but Jeff's body is like built like a football player. Like you can see, he is 6'3", 6'2", and very, very wide shoulder. And I played with him in uh, Alvark, and he, he's uh, one of the best screener in, this, in Japan. Well, Josh, uh, you know, some teams might have been knocked out of their stride or maybe have, would have been unsettled uh, by the way that Chiba Jets started, uh, but the Brex have, have shown us what they're made of here early. Yeah, Jeff, I mean, the Brex are the first team that I've seen play in the B League this year. I mean, what I've noticed about them is they're very well balanced at every position. Makoto Hiyajima, arguably one of the best shooting players for the Japanese national team. Uh, not to mention Ryan Ross, they're probably one of the best big men. I mean, he had a great duel against... Uh, obviously with the Kawasaki Brave Thunders against Nick Fazekas. But, you know, this is a team that understands their sets. They move the ball. They play for each other. Uh, the Chiba Jets, also a very, very good team. But the thing with the Chiba Jets, everything has gone through Yuki Tagashi right now. Other players need to get involved. Oh, 
Uh, coming right out of the timeout, and Josh Duncan has earned a trip to the free throw line, and maybe this is a man that has to get more involved. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Josh Duncan and Tulasi pick and pop, pick and roll can be very effective. So he can he can shoot the shots from the threes, but he can also put the ball down and also get foul, get in the free throw line, try to get points. gets to the free throw line and sinks both to cut it back to a one point game. Coach Lippin making the uh, early entry into today's game. Really established himself as a is a key man in this uh, championship for Chiba Jets. Tagashi goes out, Nishimura comes into the game, the backup point guard. Here's the Ajima. Rossiter. Rossiter gets it back! And give the assist to Hironori Watanabe as Rossiter uh, gets another two. Josh Duncan. Wow. Big time Josh Duncan showing up at the party. Yeah, I think this is what uh, Jess needs to do right now. Yep, uh, pick and pop with Josh Duncan. Like I said, he can... He can put the ball down, and now he got the mid-range jumper. Oh, great defense from Coach Flip, and really trying to get that shot off. And you see the big fella put the ball on on the floor, and that's when you have to be able to get in there, like Flippin did, and knock it away. Very aware, as was happening when Seba Sice was putting the ball on the ground at the other end. Jeff, I'm quite surprised that, of course, Ryan Russell isn't looking to get his perimeter shot going. I mean, maybe he likes to get those shots going when he knows he has a better defensive matchup. But as we've seen the time and time again, Ryan Russell has a very, very lethal step back three point shot. Again, hasn't been looking to shoot so much here in the early stages. Kasuki Takeuchi has checked into the game as well uh, for the Bricks. Now, Gavin Edwards with a little fadeaway. Shorter follows up the basketball, gets it back. Nishimura open for three. Good! Well, with that, 53.1 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and timeout as Nishimura. I'll tell you what, I think this is a tough shot as well from Edwards. And it's this Chiba Jets team, if they can rebound the basketball as well as they have in the postseason, in the championship, uh, especially in the offensive glass, that is going to give them a chance against this very good Utsunomiya Brex team. Well, that was good for Chiba Jets to come up with that loose ball in that situation because as you can see, every – excuse me, Chiba Jets came up with that rebound. Utsunomiya Brex defense scrambling. Nishimura left so wide open. They can't allow those wide open shots because as we saw – Chiba Jets will light it up from the perimeter. But, Jeff, one player I want to mention just came in, Takeuchi. Takeuchi was playing for the Japanese national team in the 2006 World Championship back in the Saitama event, I believe. I mean, this man has been playing a very, very long time. What a veteran player he is. It's good to see him come in. And just probably one day we'll see him move into that coaching role. What do you think, Keijuro? Yes, I uh, played with him in Alva. I also played with him in the national team. Uh, he was... He always carried the national team, Japan national team, as a big man uh, before naturalized player came in. Uh, he's a very smart player, unselfish, a uh, very good teammate. Uh, and he can shoot from mid-range and three-point shooter. So uh, I don't know what he's going to do after he retired, but I think he's going to play four or five more years, I think. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Uh, great career, no doubt. And... Uh, 
Still waiting for Kai Tebbs to put his imprint on the game. Number seven, he's, he's not forcing things. He's letting it come to him. Hiyajima, meanwhile, hits it down low to Gibbs. Gibbs, little jump hook in the lane, ties it up. Now flipping with the hand check, a beautiful bounce pass, and Seba size goes in. Very impressive start for Cho Flippin. That was a very good move because now Utsunomi only has one foreigner on the court. And Shiba has three, uh, including naturalized players. So they should attack more in, inside the paint uh, so they can get more offensive rebound and also get foul. And again, Cho Flippin causing problems on the defensive end for the Bricks. Shannon Shorter right at the buzzer, and he missed it. It was uh, a good look for Shannon Shorter. Uh, but the only thing that we've been able to wean from uh, the start of this first quarter, you have to say it is going to be a hot one, a very hotly contested final between these two teams. Chiba Jets on top, 19-17. to 17. なんとかしてオーヤが一回頑張れるかいなってくるんですかヒエチカエナイスですバックダーに決めていきましたカルカボールを運ぶいや素晴らしいちょっともう止まらなくなってきましたねこの試合で三十四対三十二対五というキックショ
Uh, another good job defensively. Chiba Jets allows him to break. And Shannon Shorter with a chance for a three-point play. Jet, they got too casual there on the pick and roll. They just have to pick one side and attack and draw the foul. But, you know, Shannon Shorter, right here, just a little too casual with the dribble, and they turn it over. But Jeff Shannon Shorter, the style he plays with that mid-range, the sort of off-the-dribble shot, reminds me of Vinnie Johnson in the microwave. Just very effective, but very efficient as well. Going way, way back, Vinny Johnson, the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Three decades. I think that was before Gajota was born. It was before I, I was think born. So. I think my parents used to call me a bad boy as well. I always got called a bad boy when I was a kid. <laughs> the microwave. Well, here we go. Rex now down by seven points. Scott. Great Scott, and lays it up and in. Size didn't stay on his feet. Go flipping. We've seen him do it defensively in this game, and here he is offensively. There's Size following up the miss. And I'll tell you what, he's having to work hard, but we're still seeing uh, what Size brings to this team. And hey, that was against Josh Scott. But he just physical and it had a good position to get rebound. Scott hands it off to his team. A little give and go action. And the ball knocked away from Josh Scott, who holds his head like he was walloped. Now Coach Flippin bumped by that man right there, Hiajima. I see that both teams trying to stop the any transition points. So they, if they want to use foul, they got to use it to prevent easy points. Rossiter comes back in. Of course, huge year. And now it's uh, size going up and being met uh, by Rossiter. Or over there on that Brex bench. They've come back already once, but now Chiba Jets have gone back in front. LJ Peak into Rossiter. Edwards guarding Rossiter Peak back to Rossiter. Ikaruga and another good defensive stand. Now Shorter oh, passes pass. quickly up to Nishimura. Wide open. Now this gives a chance for the Brex to run. Uh-oh, don't get in Peach way. Oh, and Nishimura reaches in but commits the foul. Well, Jeff, on the last offense that Utsunami and Brex had, they went a pick and roll sequence of Ryan Rossi. I mean, he was wide open down the middle, but they didn't get the ball to him. And I can see he's getting a little bit frustrated because they've got to get the ball to him in spots where he's going to be dangerous right now. One thing Utsunami and Brex can do themselves a lot of favor, try and get the Chiba Jets into the penalty and try and get to the free throw line a lot more. I mean, it's down by seven. It's the biggest deficit it's been so far here in the first half. He makes the first. You can see there was a no doubt about it on the foul. He really got him good. Raking across his left arm. The peak just takes the punishment, goes to the free throw line, and makes both. Duncan back in the basketball game. Right at the elbow now, shorter. Bounce pass to Duncan, and Duncan. Mm. Oh, that was a nice hang time by Josh Duncan. Looked like he was going to pass it, ended up taking the shot. Yeah, he didn't rush through anything. He's, he see the defender, and then he gave the little photo, floater. 35 years of age, still playing exceptionally well, Josh Duncan. And Ikaruga misses. Edwards chases down the rebound. Shorter. Edwards passes up the three. And now, I believe, three seconds. 
violation. Hands it back off to the Brex. So this is the style that Chiba Jets want to play. They want to isolate players. You got Shannon Short and Josh Duncan, but again, Utsunami and Brex are a very, very good man-to-man -man defensive team. You got to put a bit more sets in there, maybe a few pick and rolls. You got to wear them down a bit better than that. Here's Ikaruga, and off the front of the rim. I think for Brex, a uh, Japanese player has to score more points to, to release more attention from the, from the foreigners and Ryan Rossiter. If they can shoot and make some shots, it's going to be a lot more easier. Ikaruga called for the foul. On Edwards. Yeah, you know, we saw Nishimura come out uh, for Chiba Jets, hit the three. Uh, we've seen Co Flippin come in and uh, present some danger. Hiyajima comes back into the game uh, for the Brex. Nishimura up top, off to shorter. Oh boy, nice little cross into the lane. He just makes so many big plays. Very difficult uh, to contend. He's fearless. Jeff, the problem that the Brex have on defense is that when Shannon Shorter has the ball, because he's such an effective isolation player, any penetration he makes into the key, Normally, the other teams will collapse in the help side, which will lead to a wide open shooter. But you can see Utsunami and Brex not over helping right now, but that leaves a bigger problem for them. They have to contain Shannon Short and not allow him to break the defense down. Well, the free throws take it up to a 30 21 lead. And uh, really, uh, the Brex not coming up with many answers right now. Scott comes up for the high pick. They pass the ball around. Operating out on the perimeter right now. And now the penetration and the drive and endo. And exactly what you're talking about, Tejuro. Yep. Uh, somebody has to step up of the Japanese players, and this time it was endo. Yep, endo, endo can be a very good uh, three-point shooter, but the hesitation that made Shannon Shoto go back to his man gave more space in the middle. And that was a great finish. And then one. So with 4.43 remaining. ノコリは5秒。最後のシュートは誰に勝ったのかが。シュートは決めてきました。倒したレナガラオさんショット。ノコリ、6秒あれが来る。ブラックショット。I'll tell you what, there's nothing quite like a buzzer beater, KJ. Did you hit any? Uh, not recently. <laughs> <laughs> but I made big shots down down the stretch uh, to close the game. But the buzzer beat always feels good. That the moment that when you threw the ball and everybody is so quiet, silent, and when the ball goes in, the crowd just go crazy. That's the moment that every player, I guess, wants. Well, with this uh, Chiba Jets team uh, wants is a, a first B-League title, and they have certainly uh, given themselves a good platform to build on here in the finals. Going up against this powerful Brex team with the early lead, uh, but there is a long way to go as uh, Endo tries to complete the three-point play. And he does. Shimura still in the game. 
Interesting, Tagashi getting a lot of time on the bench right now. Resting up perhaps for the second half. Oh, good pass. Of size. Yep. He came over to help out. Well, that was it. That was an excellent pass by Nishimura and just a tremendous catch as well by size. <laughs> Yeah, when the pick and roll happens, uh, there's a mismatch. There are a lot of rotations going on, and Nishimura didn't definitely miss the chance, and he threw right on the dime. So Spain international size goes to the line and makes the first. However, uncharacteristically, misses the second, goes off. The back of the iron, seven-point lead for the Chiba Jets against the Bricks. Yajima. Only red shirts there for the rebound. That's a good look for him, Jeff, because it won't be long until Makoto Hiyajima starts to light it up in the perimeter. Size and spinning, turning, and is that a travel? I think, he took, I think he took a couple of steps there on that one, but uh, that, that was definitely not a Euro step, that's for sure. <laughs> so the Brecht's trying to uh, cut into this deficit here at the end of the first half. Rossiter. Oh, good move. Passes it out. Great repulse. Right what I love about that play is he got the ball the first time, didn't like the position, threw it back out, and then he fought for even stronger position. And that's just why Ryan Ross is such a good player. Shudahara gets in the lane. Look at Edwards. Boy, he is getting after it on the glass. Rossiter chases down the basketball, though. And almost loses it. Bends over, picks it up, and he gets it to Scott for a wide-open dunk. I think Gabby Edwards was a little complaining to the ref it was a foul and he wasn't really focused on getting back on defense and then Ryan, Pe Ryan Rossiter and Brex took advantage of it. Yeah, you see it so many times, don't you? A uh, player wants to foul, he talks to the referee, meanwhile... Uh, the other team is getting down the floor. And uh, really the message uh, has been sent early on in this game that they are letting him play. Mm -hmm. Here's Rossiter, a good job spotting his teammate. I mean, this is the B-League finals. There's no time for complaining to ref and not giving any easy points to the opponent. And Brex is really focused, even though they are down, but they're not really, like, rushing anything. Could they be... They know how to win the championship four years ago, so Ryan knows it too. But KJ, you, you like the fact that they're letting them play, right? I mean, you want, you know, yes. there's nothing worse than seeing the games constantly stopped by players questioning the referees. Yes, and also both teams want to play really physical defense and, you know, not cheapy foul. They're not going to call that. You know, they want to let the game play and players play. And at the end, you know, players, the, everybody wants to see the stars play. Okay, coming out of the timeout, Nishimura remains in the game uh, with Tagashi on the bench. Edwards comes up high. Now Shorter, and Shorter's bounce pass, well, not sure that was the right idea. Rossiter gets in. It's a one-point game. That's always worrisome when you call a timeout and then coming right out, you don't execute on offense. Shorter over to Nishimura for open three. 
Edwards battling away. Size comes down with it. Shudahara open. And again, Edwards. And boy, they have called a foul <laughs> on Josh Scott. Boxing out. I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, he's underneath him on that one, Jeff. Right there. As you can see, Edwards goes up. Scott's just underneath him. Just there. Now, the thing is, it's the positioning on the offense. If you get into a good position and you jump in the air and the defense is below you, you always give the official a 50-50. But I'm with you guys on this one. You want to let the players play, keep the physicality in the game. So another timeout with 2.18 remaining in the first half. And Brex, who uh, has had a couple of comebacks already, and certainly confirming uh, they are not going to be a team uh, that's going to be put away quietly. <laughs> they are tough. And also the very interesting point uh, this season is uh, you had to win two games to, win it, to become a champion. Uh, so this is not one and done, and but also but to get a first win is more comfortable for a team to become a champion. So this first game is really important for both teams. Yeah, it's a vital game. One thing that struck me, uh, and I think Josh as well, is that you know you're playing a lot of games. And mm -hmm. Hey, they're turning around and play it again tomorrow here in Yokohama City. They have the advantage of not traveling, and uh, but then they'd have a day off in between. But you know, there's a lot of games. That, you know, does fatigue become a factor at all on that? Do you think, uh, KJ? Uh, I mean, yeah, fatigue is a little bit going to be an issue, uh, especially if you, if they play a third game. So the bench players, the, the team collectively, has to manage the time-wise. But as you know, player, if you want to win championship, the fatigue is not going to be an issue when the game's on the line. Edwards gets the first to drop, but not the second. So the Brex can uh, tie it or take the lead on this possession. Chiba's playing zone defense. Baseline. So Scott ties it at 32. Udohara open in the right corner. Higashi back in the game over to Shorter. Steps into an open three. Long. And now it's going to be a Brex have a chance to take the lead. Three-point shot. Good! That's exactly what they do. What a run. And it was Indo. Again, providing the points. That was just too easy. Ball screen and Hara didn't go over the screen. Gave Endo a wide open look. Now Tagashi. Oh, terrific work on the boards from Saba's size. <laughs> just confused why the Chiba Jets would play a 2-3 zone against a team that can shoot the ball very well from the print. I mean, well, now it looks like they've gone to a higher 3-2 zone, I guess. Shot clock down to seven. They get it to Rossiter. Rossiter gets it back, puts it up. And Sice starting to assert himself on the glass. Gets it off to Tagashi. Wow, That's good pass. pass. Oh, Shudahara. The Tagashi factor. That was great defense, rebound, transition. Everything was great. Iojima over to Rossiter, the reach and the foul on Tagashi. Well, they had a foul to give, so no free throws for, for the Bricks. So now Tagashi goes out, and 
uh, right to Akaho comes in. Just hit on Tagashi to pick up a foul. Rossiter then takes a very difficult shot and Saez uh, with almost a uh, not in my house from a long way away. Rossiter complaining that somebody went up and hit the net, I believe. Uh, but nevertheless, at halftime, it's Chiba Jets on top, 36 to 35. Hey, who are those guys? Well, what a first half it's been. Uh, Kajuru, Matsui, KJ, Matsui rather, KJ yep. and Josh Bitt. Uh, you know, we knew, we knew the intensity level would probably go up. It has, the physicality has gone up. And uh, I thought that was an important finish to that first half as well, KJ, from, from Chiba, because it looked like the Brex were starting uh, to get to grips with things. Yeah, I think so. Uh, when Togashi came in, they played 2 3 zone to try to change the rhythm a little bit. Uh, even though Jets was up a little bit, uh, Breck came down and hit threes and came back. But it was, it's good that nobody is foul trouble in Chiba Jets and they go halftime with one point lead. So I think uh, second half, you'll see a lot of maybe uh, two, three zone, man to man, changing of defense to change the rhythm. And uh, hopefully it's gonna be a close game like in first half. And Josh, do you think, uh, can you get a feel for this game one? You know, has Chiba, have Chiba Jets let an opportunity go a little bit by twice opening up leads of about eight, seven, eight, nine points? Well, we saw that in the playoff semifinal against the Ryoko Golden Kings, of course. I mean, look, they take leads, but then, of course, they get very lax days because they take their foot off the pedal, and then, of course, the teams come back into it. I think we're going to see the same in this series. But one thing the Chiba Jets can have on their favor is Seba Size. Now, Seba Size, for me, goes after every second chance. He goes after every offensive rebound. If he can control that stat, he can definitely give the Chiba Jets a good chance. But for me, the kind of player Yuki Togashi is, we get two kinds of players. We know that he is a fantastic basketball player, arguably the best point guard for the Japanese national team. But when he becomes a dominant facilitator for the Chiba Jets, they become a much more efficient team. Four of those on the offensive glass, and uh, and really uh, the, the only man that's matched him in that sense has been Scott, although he only has four rebounds. Um, uh, this Brex team, though, what do you think really makes them effective, uh, KJ, th their ability to play from behind and to get back into these games? Uh, like I said from the beginning, the uh, defense and uh you know, the Chiba Jets are really focused on not getting Brex to get offensive rebounds. Uh, so, uh, like I mentioned in the halftime too, but Japanese player has to step up, uh, not just rely on Ryan to create offense, uh, be a facilitator, but like Hijima, like Endo, uh, those guys need to step up and make shots uh, to get back in the game. And Josh, you talked about Kai Tevs. Uh, needing to be a big factor today. He really has not uh, made an imprint on this game yet. Yeah, the young fellow, this is a new experience for him. I mean, this is his first time, I believe, playing in a B-League final. Of course, there's a lot of expectation on him, but he has to learn how to accept that expectations and learn how to play through it. I think right now the best thing he can do is try and control the tempo in the backcourt, not try to overdo it too much. We can see the few times he's turned it over, but again, I think that's the inexperience. But no doubt in my mind, Kai Tabs is going to be one hell of a player for the Japanese national team in the future to come. Well, as you can see, it's uh, at halftime. We're bringing you the action from Yokohama City, uh, the Nisei B-League Championship Finals, and uh, Chiba Jets chasing their first B-League title against Utsunomiya Brex, uh, the winners of the first one. And it's uh, Chiba Jets on top, 36 to 35. And uh, we're going to be right back, uh, and I'm going to throw you now to, to be able to watch the weekly meet B-League uh, on the Okinawa Arena, and from that, uh, the B-League Asian players. Uh, so keep an eye on this, and we'll be right back. Let's go on to the next segment of the show. Here, we'll be introducing the not well-known attractions of the B-League to the viewers. It's called What's Up B-League? For the 10th time, it's point 10. Okinawa Arena, the recently completed Okinawa Arena, 
is the future of B League. With maximum capacity of 10,000 people, it is the first arena designed for sports entertainment in Japan, such as seat placement, massive screen, luxury rooms, VIP lounge, and more. It is built for the spectators, and it's a place where you can experience something out of ordinary. Let's take a look at the first B League game that took place in the Okinawa Arena. Okay, wow, it looks so nice. This is the Okinawa Arena. Brand new. Okay, this is the VIP lounge. Whoa, look at the view. Oh my god. So awesome. And the screen is huge. Man, is this an NBA arena? Okay, this is it. This is the 4D replay system. First ever to be introduced in the arena in Japan. And there is 64K cameras in the arena that enables to have a replay like this. This is so awesome. Look at, look at this replay. A hometown native, Kishimoto of Ryukyu Golden Kings, said after the game, the atmosphere of this arena brings out better plays for both teams. I felt that this game was important first step that will lead to the improvement of not only B League, but the entire Japan basketball. The Ryukyu players should be excited to play here as well, having this amazing arena as their home. Let me introduce some of the fans' voices, like, I don't feel like this is Japan. I'm speechlessly impressed. The view was awesome from any seats in the arena. I am pretty convinced that there will be more and more kids that will dream of playing here in the future. Billy considered this arena that values the environment of the spectators very important. And facilities like Okinawa Arena will be standard requirements of criteria for the new B1 license in the future. Starting with Okinawa Arena, next dream facilities are planned to be constructed all over Japan. We hope that with many more arenas utilizing the regional characteristics being built, the situation surrounding basketball will push up to the next level in Japan. And last but not least, Okinawa Arena is scheduled to be used in FIBA World Cup 2023. We will welcome you all if you have a chance to visit here and watch the game. And let's go on to the next segment of the show. Here we will be explaining and introducing to the viewers attractions of the B-League that are not well known yet. Call What's Up B-League! Point 2. Asian Player Quotas it's a new rule started from this season. Each team will be able to sign with one player from China, Chinese Taipei, Indonesia, Philippines, or Korea. And they do not count as the foreign player quotas. There are two main reasons. Number one, improving the competitiveness of the B League. It increases the opportunities to play against great players in Asia on a daily basis and also to deal with excessive playing time of foreign players. Number two, business standpoint. It enables the league to explore the Asia market, sponsorships, and broadcasting rights. There are currently three players playing under Asian player quotas. Jin Liu from China, playing for Nishinomiya Storks. Jamin Yang from Korea, playing for Shinshu Brave Warriors and 30 Ravenna from Philippines playing for San and Neil Phoenix who have made a major impact on league's Asian market strategies. I heard some rumors that more and more players are coming. Who do you want next?
five is the halftime score. Chiba Jets on top of Usonomiya Brex here in the finals. And uh, I, I suppose really uh, it's what we expected. Uh, a very tough physical game. A pretty low scoring game uh, to this point. Uh, defense has been intense. And I guess it'll be more of the same in the second half. Uh, what do you think about that, KJ? Uh, yes, I think second half is going to be more defensive game. But uh, the beginning of the third quarter, uh, like the first first quarter, like Chiba jump on uh, Brex in the beginning. Uh, so Brex has to, you know, get some stops and not let Chiba get in the rhythm. Josh, usually when uh, Chiba Jets out-rebound their opponents, it bodes well for their fortunes. Right now, they are winning the rebounding battle, as we saw uh, from those statistics. Uh, 20 rebounds in all, eight on the offensive glass, uh, although they're only up by one. Yeah, Jeff, I think we're going to see momentum waves here in the second half. I think we're going to see one seed get off to a very, very good start, build a little lead, could be between five and ten points. But then either one of them will come back. We've seen that a lot with these two teams. However, we haven't seen that with Utsunami or Brexit in the playoffs. They comfortably got their way into the final. This is probably the first time they've been really challenged. Second half action now underway here in Yokohama City in the finals. And Shudahara tries to uh, get things rolling with a drive, but he misses. And now Endo. And then they get it down low to Scott. And the Brex move back in front. Well, that starts with Ryan Ross. I mean, just the vision of how to place a pass and just identify an open player. Much credit. He does not get enough credit for being a great facilitator for a big man. Oh. Uh, the dunk to Duncan. I don't know about you, but I could hear that foul uh, a long way away from the arena. That was a hack. So Josh Duncan goes back to the free throw line uh, where he went earlier. Made both of his attempts as a team. Chiba Jets seven of nine at the free throw line today. with his first attempt. And gets the second one to drop as well. And Hiyajima, early introduction here. So Tenzai bringing, bringing him back into the game. What do you make of that? I mean, Peak has three fouls, and the game is still a close game, so I think Anzai... Wants him to be, you know, uh, playing fourth quarter, so he's trying to save him. And he is even play really good in the first half. So after the free throws, he begins to get it back. Sato over the size now. Size. Oh boy, drills that soft touch looked much better that time. I don't like it when size fades away. I like it when he's set or when he's attacking, going to the basket. Indo. Boy, that was. Uh, good attempt at the offensive glass, at the offensive rebound by Rossiter, but he couldn't hold on to the basketball. Well, Jeff, defensively, they've taken him out of his inside game today. They're really making him work for everything. Well, what Ryan Rossiter needs to do in this game is set a lot of picks, but has to decide whether he wants to pop out or go to the basket, and he's got to make decisions a lot quicker in this game. Really is 
tough to say to, to, to get a feel. Uh, neither team has, uh, has been able to take control in this game. At times, you feel like Chiba Jets is starting to get on top, only for the uh, for the Brecks to come back. But right now, it, it seems like a better start to the second half uh, for Chiba Jets, and they're getting uh, a lot of opportunities uh, for size. That time, the foul called on Hiyajima. That's his second. Oh boy, the ball thrown right into the hands by Sato, into the hands of Rossiter. And in the turnover, cheaply, leads to a break, and shoot a hard drives all the way in. So both He's teams very good at going left. Defense. Yep, so when he goes left, you know, he's, he's most likely going to make shots. And he knows Josh Scott is coming, so he tried to use the rim to protect it. Jeff, I love how the Chibi Jets are able to turn a fast break point after a good defensive stop there. But again, Ryan Russell, here's a pick and roll. He's got to be a lot quicker. Make that decision. Endo drives in, crashing the boards. Rossiter not able to score with the putback. They'll keep it at this end. Bounce the basketball to Hiyajima, who is closely guarded by Sato. Now Rossiter. Ikaruga goes right in and is swatted by Sides, gets it back, misses everything. With Sides is, is causing problems now on both ends of the floor. Sato forced to pick up his dribble. And then the good defense extended by Brex forces Tagachi to step out of bounds. Great ball man defense right there. If you don't go anywhere, you shouldn't just dribble right in front of the guy and then pick up the ball. Rossiter to the corner. He's in. Oh, looked like it was going down and it popped out. No Brex play is going for an offensive rebound. Right now, they got to try to set themselves this game in a better way to go for those second chance points. Josh Duncan. And Josh Duncan called for the charge. Brex able to get position. The referees decided to have a look at it. Yeah, excellent call. I thought. That's a charge. Flippin, Gavin Edwards back into the game. Also, Shannon Shorter. It really does feel like with Edwards, especially, and Shorter able being, being able to come into the game, those guys are game winners. I mean, it is uh, addition by subtraction in a way. You lose a player like Duncan, but then you bring in them, boy, it's a, it's a different story altogether. Rossiter. And uh, doesn't like the referee's call here. Now referee is just a little bit of calling fouls compared to the first half. that we were saying uh, they were letting them play, being physical. Here we go. Four minutes now into the second half. Shorter over the sides. Boy, he's feeling confident if he takes that. And coming over the back uh, with Scott. Here again. And, uh, you know, I, I would suggest that's also calling that one tight. Indo goes out of the game. Zenzai needs somebody uh, uh, to, 
to kind of make a change in the momentum here. He brings in Jeff Gibbs. That's a very, very big lineup. They got three basically power fours on the floor. Kichiro, so uh, I've I noticed guess. that that Japanese teams do go with very, very big lineups. See, what do you make of that in today's game where it's more about small boy you see all the international basketball? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Like a trend of uh, nowadays is very small basketball, a lot of three-pointers, uh, a lot of like ball movement, all that stuff. But I think they want to try to get mismatch within the three, uh, three foreigners and post up, maybe create this advantage. And now they play zone. Well, Rossiter makes the move and the foul call on Coach Lippin. Looks like Rossiter is close to a travel there. Coach Lippin, his second foul in the game. makes the first. Josh, you, you were uh, alluding to the fact that the, this uh, Cuba Jets team has taken Ryan Rossiter out of what he wants to do. So I guess there's a fine line of uh, being aggressive and going for his, going for his points and, and also letting the game come to him. Absolutely, Jeff. But I'm very surprised that Ryan Rossiter really hasn't done a lot of pick and pops in the perimeter. I mean, the games I've seen him play is one of the most efficient and very much lethal three-point shooters. But again, great players at some point. They always step it up. Maybe that could be here in the second half. Well, his free throws make it a four-point game. Oh, meanwhile, oh, boy, misses the layup. And then Edwards was there for the putback, but the fumbled the ball out of bounds. And once again, even though Chiba Jets have uh, really had the better of the running here in the second half, they're only up by four points. <laughs> and now Gibbs bringing the basketball up the floor. Rossiter steps back and doesn't get to go, but there was Scott. And Gavin Edwards this time called for the foul. got to do more of that. They have got to take some responsibility in that offensive blast to get some more opportunities. But uh, certainly when you're trailing, you don't want to see uh, your team miss free throws. He does get the second. Back to a three-point game. Matt Rossiter on Tagashi. A defender switch back. Rossiter is getting short. The shot clock down to five. Goes behind his back. Puts it up from the top of the key. Misses badly. Both Lippin kept it alive, but the ball goes out of bounds. And back over to the Bricks. Okay, Juro, you made a great point in the first half that New Tsunami and Brex, they can afford to switch with big players on little players. Now you can see they just forced Shannon Short into a very, very tough shot. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and on, on, the, on the other side, when Utsunomiya had three bigs, they don't have very, uh, they don't have a lethal three-point shooter, so they just played zone to pack inside, and then you know let let them uh, get the rebound and then push. Uh, so Utsunomiya wants to bully ball inside, but Chiba Jets on the other hand wants to play inside. So just give. Fouled by Shorter and makes the first. Really is a, a defensive battle today, low scoring. To the Jets on top. 43-41 uh, after that miss. And just keeping an eye on size, he now has 10 rebounds to go with his 11 points. So Mr. Double Double has lived up to his name already. 
And a three-point shot, and he is fouled. Tagashi, so three free throws for the Japan national team point guard. I think this is the first time I see Togashi actually shooting the ball really aggressive in second half. I mean, he was really quiet in the first three, four minutes. So I want to see these three free throws and after that, how he's going to play. He makes the first. It's one of those uh, situations, uh, KJ, where, again, you want to get a hand in the face but you simply cannot foul the three-point shooter. You're just giving away points, although he's not going to punish them completely. Oh, yes. I mean, shooting three-point shooter is, you can't do it. Coach always said, don't foul the shooter all the time. Contest, but not foul. Well, Tagashi makes two out of the three. It's back to a 45-41 lead uh, for Chiba. Interesting, they have Shorter now guarding Rossiter. Now a three-point shot from Iwajima. And Saez with another rebound. Takashi, open floor. And decides to hold it up. Able to get rid of the basketball before he falls down. And Takashi with a little floater. If that was his basket or Edwards with the tap in, but whatever, the basketball went in, and here we are once again. Chiba Jets moving up uh, by several points and uh, forcing the timeout for Utsunomiya. Yeah, Utsunomiya just plays a different tempo. I mean, it's not many players, I think, in the continent of Asia or even international basketball that can cope with the speed of Yuki Tagashi. But again, they force him into a tough shot, but then Utsunomiya breaks, they didn't do the, the next part, which is box out. And that is going to be where the Chiba Jets, as they go for every second chance, could punish Utsunomiya breaks. Well, in many ways, it's been a chess match. And uh, right now, the piece that's being played is that man right there, Tagashi. Uh, but again, the, the rebounding uh, is consistently a problem uh, for opponents of the Chiba Jets. Chiba, in this game, out-rebounding Brex 29-20. to 20. And a lot of those rebounds coming on the offensive glass, as we just saw with that putback by Gavin Edwards. KJ, what makes this uh, Chiba Jets team so effective on the offensive glass? Because uh, this, I mean, the Gavin is, is not a small team. No, not at all. Uh, Utsunomiya is a really good offensive rebounding team, but on the other hand, they kind of rely on bigs to rebound on defensive uh, end. So I guess the Japanese guy needs to box out and help rebound uh, the bigs because Chiba is crushing every time, and Gavin. And size, a very mobile, long arm, uh, very good sense of where the ball is going to drop. And they're kind of killing uh, this whole game. Well, trying to be back in the game. And as a beach misses and size with yet another rebound for Chiba Jets. He's got 12 boards. Now he catches the pass. And I'm not sure. I think that was going in. Probably the first for size. Tagashi collects the assist. And it looks like Chiba just starting to hit the runway. Well, it was definitely going in, but again, you can just see going off to every second chance. This is where the Chiba Jets will kill you. Did rejected. Edwards, Shudahara gets on the on the hardwood. Now both teams crashing away for the basketball. Jeff, that play right there, both coaches will be so happy with their players. The ball's on the floor, and you just see bodies flying everywhere. This is the final. This is what it means to be in the final. Both these two teams want to win, and again, it's just a hustle, the tenacity, and the desire. Look at that. Everybody just fighting for that ruck. And this is very a crucial possession right here. Uh, down, you know, eight points. Utsunomiya, two minutes to go. 
if they can score right here, they can really change the maybe momentum. Uh, so this position right here is very important. Well, Endo misses from the right on the baseline, and she the Jets uh, already up by eight points. Shorter passes back outside to Edwards. Oh, he missed that one badly. Endo, bumped by Kagashi, hands it off to Gibbs, who's just been rejected by Gavin Edwards. Gavin Edwards, and look at that, worried about having the shot blocked, uh, put up a quick one. Well, Gibbs is trying to post him up. Gibbs is trying to get him on the perimeter and beat him with speed, but he's never going to back him down the low block. I mean, that's a tough, tough play. Kagashi misses, but there's Edwards. And he was fouled by Gibbs on the putback. Like I said before, like one-on-one -on -one matchup is not working this game. I think Peak was right behind uh, Gavin Edwards. He needs to pinch with a Jeff Gibbs to prevent Gavin Edwards to get a rebound. He was kind of standing there and trying to you know, jump out him. I don't know, I'll jump him, but it didn't work out. So Edwards makes. The first, the lead goes to nine points, and Drex is totally out of sorts right now, uh, especially on the offensive end. And Edwards makes the second as well. Biggest lead of the game to see the Jets 51-41 here in game one of the finals. Shooting in from the right, and Endo, this time though, hit the three, that was huge. Just felt like Brex were on the ropes. They needed something. Shorter. Oh, beautiful handoff. Oh, great pass. Oh, it's just too easy team. coming off the screen. Nobody comes out to stop short of it. Again, the roller, no help side defense. Brex need to pick up their defense. It's too easy right now for the Jets. Watanabe has the ball knocked away. Tagashi gets it to size. He's going to time. Up. Shorter lays it up and in. He goes old school on us. He's old school. I think you heard me say throw down. He went for the layup. <laughs> well, let's see the Jets now in command here against the Bricks. And Watanabe hits a badly needed jump shot. Now let's see if Brex can force a turnover and get another shot. No, it's going to be Edwards for wow. hard to the rim and quickly. Boy, that attempt grazed the net. That would have been something else that could have gone in. But the third quarter, owned by that team right there in red. They lead it 55, 57, excuse me, 46 over Utsunomiya at the end of three. Well, if I'm the Utsunomiya Brex coach. Togas, 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 you got the side up. いや、さすがです。そしてまた決まるところが役者だなという感じがありますが。もう翔さんたち崩れがついていますが、190 
して最後はブザービートで富樫が決めたという前半です結構ギリギリでしたけどよく決めましたね最後は原修太見事なスリーポイントを沈めましたこれで前半が終わりました29対38アウェイの千葉ジェッツリードで前半が終了していますバトルが出てこなかった川崎一方で千葉はこの最後原修太かなとスリーポイントはこれ大きかったですね、えー Well, back to live action, and Chiba Jets have started off、uh, with a long one to go up by 14 points. They have definitely、uh, got the wind in their sails right now. b r e c k looking for, to do something, anything to change things around. The spin move by、uh, Rossiter, but Scott there for the follow. Well, that's exactly what the Brex needs. Someone just to follow up for a missed shot there. But again, a tough, tough move there by Ryan Russell. Something else the Brex needs a little bit more attacking of the basket. And the name of the game has been Edwards and Size for the Cuba Jets game. But this time, Scott reaches in, takes the basketball away. Endo fouled in the backcourt by Nishimura. Uh, Chief, one point I wanted to make at the end of the third quarter if I was the Utsunomi Brex coaching staff, I would have been infuriated. With my team, because you saw at the final few seconds they got a good shot, but just how quickly c h i e f a Jets were able to inbound the basket and get it up the court. Nobody stepped out to take a charge. This is the final, but you need to play a little bit more aggressively than that. He hands it off, and、uh, that's a little acrobatic attempt at the basket. Doesn't go in, they're going to keep it down at this end, folks.、Uh, the attendance for today's game, by the way, 4,600. In 78, so that's、uh, half that's allowed because of the coronavirus pandemic.、Uh, but you would think that it's a, a full capacity with the noise that's being generated here in Yokohama City. And I know these te two teams、uh, went to the finals before and experienced this Yokohama、uh, arena. But, you know, we, then, then I used to playing. This big arena during the season. So the, the rim is different, you know, the environment is different, the crowd is different,、uh, and the adrenaline is, is up. So I know these two teams can shoot better than today's,、uh, today's game, but、uh, I think I see a very good game. Well, Josh Scott suddenly emerging. We saw him get an offensive rebound and put back, then he made a steal, and here he is. Getting another layup just to kind of breathe some life into the Brex challenge and、uh, forcing a timeout by Chiba Jets. So, we talk about、uh, what has been the success,、uh, what has brought the success for Chiba Jets and really Edwards and Sice, especially in the Second half, they've been terrific,、uh, but they have combined for 23 of their team's 35 rebounds, and、uh, many of those rebounds coming on the offensive glass.、Uh, but the, the good news for Brex is there is a long way to go in this game. Yep, the game is not over.、Uh, they're only down 10 points and eight minutes to go. And Brex just scored two, two in a row, two possessions in a row. So if they can get stops and score right back in the game and give more pressure on Chiba Jets. Well, we talk about Josh Scott, and he now has 16 points and six rebounds. He's seven of nine from the floor. 
just had uh, a couple of baskets for the Bricks. Now a different look defensively. A little bit of a trap. Now Chudahara attacks and he gets blocked. Much more aggressive, uh, but they do not get the basketball. Finally, those size misses and Rossiter rebounds and runs. Hands it off to Peak Ooh. and coming out. Wow. Rossiter That's a tough one, that is. The moving screen. I know Ryan Rossiter really likes to push the ball in transition, especially when he gets a rebound, but I think right now he'll do his team a lot of favors if he can get into an outlet and sprint the fast break as a trailer. At the moment, it does seem like it's slowing down the fast break basketball of the Utsunomiya Bricks. Co flipping, meanwhile, oh, and hands it off. Gavin Edwards. Well, huge swing there after the turnover, going down, and Cuba Jets going back up by 12 points. And now, just an absolute gift, an unforced turnover. I think right now, Brett Jeff needs is. someone to step up, they need somebody to really be, you know, say, hey, we still got time, relax, and make a good play. But they, everybody's rushing right now, seems like. Well, that's what playing Cuba Jets will do to you. They will put you under pressure. Step back, shorter. And I guess it could, could be a worse situation for them, obviously, if that shot falls. Now Nishimura comes out and bumps Pete. So That's very interesting what you said, Keijuro, because, you know, Utsunomi and Brex are rushing things. If you think the way they play, the style, the style that they play, it's very patient, the ball moves. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, they're being punched in the face. They are being tested. question is, seven minutes left, can they keep up with that patient style to get them back into this game? Yeah, I think Ryan Rossiter is the one who needs to, I think, shoot the ball more. I think he'd be really more facilitator, you know, creating shots for teammates. But he, he needs to lead the team and then carry the team, I guess. Fourth foul, Nishimura sends Ikaruga to the line. I think if you're Brett, you, you're right, Kajuro, uh, it's, it's a matter of, hey, we're okay. You know, we've got more than seven minutes remaining. We're down 11. Let's play our game. But on the other hand, the reality, looking at it from the side, is, boy, it is going to be tough to come back against this Chiba Jets team again. The way they have been getting after the basketball on the glass. Co flipping, meanwhile, wow, it in move. and banks it in. Well, Jeff, I was just about to ask you, is it co time right now? <laughs> um, basketball goes out of bounds. Yeah, uh, I think Chiba. Chiba's up, but they, they, they're not, like, satisfied with the 11-point lead. And then they're the ones that are more aggressive and attacking the basket. And everyone is confident of playing basketball, I think. It's in the media, it's kind of like, oh, we're down 10, 11 points. Uh, somebody needs to step up. But they don't seem like they have a confidence or swagger that they are the, lead, the uh, league uh, record holder, you know? Well, timeout on the court. Worrying times for the Bricks. 13 points, the lead for Chiba Jets. And are you surprised uh, at the impact that Co-Flippin has been able to make in these finals? Uh, or rather, in, in the championship, but also in this final game one? I think so, because he's the X Factor. Uh, he can be really aggressive, and he's a very good one-on-one -on -one, uh, skilled player. Uh, and he can he can attack to the basket. He's very athletic, so he can finish over a lot of foreigner big guys. And like like last play, he just went on a drive and made a layup. If he f feels good and then play well, that gives a lot of energy to the Chiba Jets. Co-flipping, X-Factor, 
Uh, certainly one of the best players, you would have to say, for Chiba Jets in the championship. He has been terrific. And here he is again. Gets into the paint. Elevates this time. He's rejected. And immediately called for the two free throws. And Josh Scott disputes that, saying he got all ball. Let's have a look. Oh, no question about it. Yeah, no question. Nope. <laughs> well, you can tell by the reaction by Coach Lippin. He just confidently looked over to his bench and said, that's two free throws. And I think that when Cole Flippin is feeling it right now and then Chiba Jets is going to him, I think Utsuna needs to understand that. You know, Cole Flippin is driving. Somebody's got to help because he's so deadly in driving and they finish over. Make him pass and then make somebody else shoot the ball right now. And Cole Flippin gets them both to drop. Brex launching from downtown and Tagashi rebounds it. And they don't slow it up at all. They get it right down low to Josh Duncan who goes up and uh, Josh Scott rebounds that miss. It's almost like they're playing like it's an aggregate game, trying to build as much as possible even though it's a three game series. But it, you know, again, Utsunomi and Brex been really taken out of their game here in the second half. his way down low missing but getting it back no and then losing again Brex uh, Ikaruga so the biggest lead of the game for Chiba Jets 66 to 51 and not looking like they want to slow down at all Tagashi co flipping from the arc and look at Gavin Edwards. Boy, that's where they've tormented this Brex team today on the offensive glass. Offensive wow. rebound number five, and it leads to a three-pointer from that man, Tagashi. Okay, Jiro, that almost yep. felt like a Yasu Minasai. <laughs> Yasu Minasai, yeah. <laughs> I think he's a little too early to say right now because they still got, they still got a game. They still got to win one more game to win championship. <laughs> Scott a great Japanese. <laughs> I take it you say that's almost a title clinched? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> All right, so, well, you know, it's, it's a, momentum, a momentum play there, of course, Jeff, because, you know, they got one shot. They got a good penetration kick out to co flipping in the corner. They missed that. But, again, Chiba Jets, they did what they did best to get that offensive rebound. It then goes out to Togashi, and, again, with a 15-point lead, he lights it up from the perimeter. And you can see the body language. It just felt like good night to everybody here. I mean, that is just a tough, tough shot by Yuki Togashi. Yeah, you simply cannot give teams like Chiba Jets uh, second and third opportunities. They're going to score. You've got to box out. And, uh, well, we did see Ryuku Golden Kings do a much better job of boxing out this Chiba Jets team in game two and actually out-rebound them uh, but then it was a business as usual in game three of that semifinal. Uh, but that has to be, you know, going into game two tomorrow, the biggest, uh, I would say, focal point for Usonomiya is, is to, they've got to do a better job boxing those guys out, keeping them off the offensive glass. Of course, there's still a long way to go in this one. Five minutes, nothing is over. Where there's hope, there is life. Uh, but an 18-point difference uh, that they're going to have to try to overcome here uh, with five minutes remaining, that is a mountain to climb. Well, Jeff, they yeah, got oh, Makoto yep. Hiyajima in the game, and they got to try and make sure they get him some open looks on the perimeter because they're down by 18. they got to get things going from downtown. Yep. And also that the game's not over, but Utsunomiya needs to find some ways to uh, score against this Chiba Jets for today's game and tomorrow's game. They got to find some solutions. Josh Scott makes uh, the first. And, yeah, so 
you know, they, they need to get into a, a better rhythm of uh, certainly offensively if they're going to contend in this series, as you say, in this finals. So also from a psychological standpoint, you know, you, mm -hmm. you would think that they do not want to walk out of here having been blown out. They want to make this a game down the stretch, get it as close as possible. Tagashi dribbling around, floats in, and Duncan with the rebound and fouled by Gibbs. It is awfully difficult to get the basketball down here. That was a nice dump. Nice pass by Tagashi. Cuba Jets have been good at the line today, 16 of 20. And Duncan has also been good. He is now 5 of 5. Relatively quiet game for Josh Duncan for second change uh, tomorrow, especially. <laughs> so his first miss and quickly up the floor. And the pass batted out of bounds. Well, that was Kai Tebbs just making a decision a little bit too late there. As soon as he got the outlet, he thought, slow it down, but then decided after that to pick it up. At this point, you got to get ahead of Gula quicker. Try and catch Chiba Jets off guard in a bit of transition defense. Kai Tebbs, you see the athleticism in his play, passes it out. And Gibbs not able to rebound it. Edwards collects it. And back to Tagashi, 420 remaining in finals game one. Duncan, quick pass to short on the baseline. Tries to give it back to Edwards. Here's Kai Tibbs. And very explosive player, Tibbs, fouled by Tagashi. I think that was a very good uh, team defense by Utsunomiya. They rotated very well. Uh, they had a mismatch, but they switched back, and then they had baseline help, and then steal. So I think Utsunomiya needs to play not just uh, individual, man to man, but also a team collectively help each other out. You know, Josh alluded to Tez being a potential factor for this team, and, uh, and just in this little cameo here that we've seen him in this fourth quarter. He really does look like he could bring a different element to the team, uh, much like Coach Lippin for Chiba Jets. And in fact, he's the one who's guarding uh, Tagashi. Here's Tagashi. Tagashi from the Oh, my Lord. Boy, that is a hurt. That's a dagger. Sugoi. Sugoi. Steps back. Good. He does have a little bit of moxie, doesn't he? Yep. I think, I think he's, he's good on using pick and roll. Uh, he can drive and he can shoot. And I think if he's open, he should just let it go and just shoot the ball, but he is a good shooter. Togashi drives in. Togashi so time no now. Yeah. No stopping this Chiba Jets team right now. They are closing in on victory in game one with 3.05 remaining. The Togashi shot uh, takes it up to an 18-point lead. This is a, a team, a club, uh, fans that are just so hopeful, so determined, it appears, uh, to go all the way and to win this B-League, having come close before. Tagashi's in the zone right now. And again, Jeff, we saw in the semifinal against Ryoko Golden Kings, he struggled very much. But again, one thing you know that you're going to get from Yuki Tagashi is the high tempo. Now, I saw him play for Japan against Chinese Taipei in the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers. When Yuki Tagashi is in the zone, there is no stopping him. That is true. And I think he wants the statement that I'm still the best point guard in Japan, and I'm not going to give you to Taves Kai that you're going to lead the Japan national team. 
What do we think about this uh, while we have a minute? What do we think about this Olympic Olympics coming to uh, Tokyo this summer and the Japan national team? Uh, KJ, you played for Japan. You played in the last mm -hmm. FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament. Yep. Are you are you hopeful that they're going to have some success? Yeah, I think so. We have a uh, you know very good Japanese players and we have naturalized players. Uh, Ryan or Rashid or Gavin Edward. And we still also have Hachimura, Rui Hachimura, and Yuta Watanabe. Those two NBA players join. You know, Japan can maybe shock the world uh, in the Olympics. We also know the women's team is uh, certainly among the front runners to get to the podium. If not, to go all the way and to Tom Hovas. The yeah, Japanese women's team is very good. Uh, every time, you know, they can really shoot the ball, uh, one of the best in the world. And, you know, they're, they're not very size, big size, but they can play team. And like I said, they can, everybody, one through five position, they can all shoot the three. Well, Hiyajima makes the first free throw and gets the second one to drop as well. Uh, to cut it back to a 16-point deficit with just under three minutes remaining. It has been an impressive game, especially second half for Chiba Jets, although they turn it over cheaply there. Iajima on the baseline, passes it, gives it up. Irofuga, good! Another three! Jeff, the game is still not over right now, but that will do their confidence a lot of good, definitely going into the second game. But look, 13 points, all they need to do is keep getting stuff off the stuff right now. And there you go. Yeah, you're going to expect a, a Jets timeout here. And Ty Tevs, oh, just a little too fancy there. Maybe needs to potentially just go for the drive, uh, but they'll keep it at this end. And Atsushi Ono must be thinking about getting a timeout if they get a basket on this trip down the floor. Rossiter. There's that step back. And it's short. Sometimes uh, it's just not your day, and it hasn't been the day of Ryan Rossiter, who has eight points, five, five rebounds, five assists, and three of 13 from the floor. Shorter into the paint. And Gibbs fouled by Gavin Edwards with 145 remaining. That was very unnecessary foul. You know, it, they're in a bonus. Utsunomiya can score points. Not shot clock moving. That was a very smart move by Gavin Edwards. Oh, boy, good. This is the free throw. Yeah, I mean, it, we've really seen the worst of the Chiba Jets here in this last minute or so. Brex Mason. It's also not bad. It's not bad for the Brex as well because they can give one foul away before getting in the penalty, which means they can also gamble a little bit here too. to get it across mid-court, he does. Shorter. Endo fouls. Shorter with 11 seconds on the shot clock. That's a bad foul to give away, especially when you had one to give away before putting him in the penalty. But now with Tsunami and Brax, you could probably throw a couple of double teams here and try and force him into a turnover. Possibly trapped to Gashi in mid-court, but they don't come up. Now Tevs has to play defense on the Japan national team point guard, and he blows right past him. Good job by Gibbs to challenge the shot, but Duncan is there to clean up the mess. And one. Jeff, they did the hard part. They got the help side there to force Togashi into a bad shot, but again, they don't box out. And now they're giving away an M1. It's a poor defensive play by Utsunomiya Brex. Yeah, here Jimmy needs to box out a little more, a little stronger. 
to prevent him getting rebound. And now Jeff Gibbs saying, if I help, you know, I get my man get offensive rebounds, so I'm not going to go and help. That just creates bad, you know, contagious flow. Well, it was uh, looking a little better for Brex until that last possession, and here is Kev. Boy, he has got some slick moves in his game. It's about as smooth as they come, but too little too late for him. As Chiba Jets close in on victory, uh, leading by 13 points. Kev doesn't fast shorter. Uh, just allowed him to go past him far too easily. Josh Duncan benefits. And, and now the kick and the basketball goes over this way. It'll go this way and Gibbs' his appeals are going to fall on deaf ears. Yeah, he, his foot rolled across the ball. They called it a kick. Oh, look wow. at that. Goodness gracious! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Gavin Edwards! Okay, Juro, that is officially yeah. Ayasu oh, Minasai. Minasai. Yeah, that is officially Ayasu Minasai. Good night. <laughs> okay, good night. We got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, that's so, off the inbound as well. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Gavin Edwards showing his uh, hops on that play and perhaps putting some more negative thoughts into the minds of Kusonomiya Brex. It has been a convincing win. Raita Akaho checks into the game and Edwards and Shorter go out with 47.7 seconds remaining. Gets around mm. and misses with the left hand. He's got all the moves. There's no doubt about that on offense. Perhaps has to move his feet a little bit better on defense, though, Tez. He's really going to make an impact in this Rex team. So final seconds ticking off the clock here. We'll have to attempt a shot. Coach Lippin drives in. Another two for the high-flying Coach Lippin. Kev looks like he's just going to dribble it out. Well, it is Chiba Jets who draw first blood in the finals. They win it convincingly here in Yokohama City as they pursue their first B League title. They win it 85 to 65 over the Utsunomiya Bricks. This absolute second half domination. Uh, you know, it was a tight game at halftime, and Chiba Jets came out and really turned it up a notch, Josh. And you have to wonder about Brex, their mental state uh, going into game two after that beatdown. Well, as you said, Jeff, I mean, of course, Ryan Ross had a very, very tough game, and as we allude to in the fourth quarter, Kai Tev, for me, I think, found his little confidence, but it was too little too late. The question is, how are they going to prepare for game two? I think the anxiety needs to get away from them. I think they've got to realize, look, we were top of the B League, the best team in the B League regular season for a reason. We need to prepare now for game two. We've been punched in the face. Because also I think the fact that they beat the Kawasaki Thunder so easy, they've probably walked into this final thinking, we're going to win this. We obviously beat the second best team. They probably didn't consider Chiba Chiba Jets, Jets to be a threat. But the, right now, Chiba Jets have become a big threat to the Tsunami of Bricks. Well, KJ, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll put it to you. If you're in that team of, uh, of the Brex, how do you bounce back mentally from that type of beatdown? You just forget it immediately? And, uh, uh, and just... I mean, it's hard to just forget this game because it's final. And they're down, they lost by 20 points. And Utsunami is usually the, the team that, you know, uh, keep the opponents under 70 and they score more than 80 points. So they didn't do a good job on defensive end and also offensive end. So 
they have a lot of problems, but they need to just look back and then see what they can do to do better uh, second game, both ends of the court. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you as we, uh, we hear some interviews. Yes. Uh, KJ, but uh, it goes without uh, saying. From Ono that... head coach from Chiba. He's going to get in the beer first. KJ, it goes without saying, for them to have any success in this series, the Brecks are going to have to rebound the ball better. Oh, yes. No question about it. Congratulations on the, today's victory. How are you feeling after today's game? Players play 40 minutes, and then it was a good game. From third quarter, you guys spread out, uh, play, play, play half for 40 minutes. If you don't lose tomorrow, that doesn't mean anything, so we have to win tomorrow. To the fans, thank you for supporting today. And, and please support the players tomorrow too, and thank you. What do you think about him as a coach? I think he's a very good coach. You know, he's a former player. Uh, I know he has a lot of pressure <laughs> to win on Chiba Jets, but I think uh, he's happy to get this today's win. So this is size. 13 points and 14 rebounds. It was great. You know, everybody came with some great energy. All the guys did a fantastic job, so we're so happy we won today. We're going to do the same tomorrow. It was a great The players all have energy. to energy to fight again tomorrow. He always play hard, but always calm. How you always prepare yourself? You know, it could be the last game of the season. We gotta give a hundred percent. You know, everything we got. We worked so hard this year to get to this moment. You know, so we gotta come and give it our all to finally get this championship. この He's obviously very good at adapting his game depending on what the situation is. He can score when he needs to, but he can also play an effective role player as well. How you came from the bench? And, and from the start of the game, I think it was a good flow, so I didn't want to break the rhythm of Chiba Jets. And even the fourth quarter, we made a big three. It's good to make that shot, but uh, even though we have a game tomorrow, so not just satisfied today's game, but about to uh, play well tomorrow. You guys have tough schedule, don't lose too many games. And everybody knows their roles and everybody has that, the uh, feeling or wants to win more than other teams. And I think that keeps rolling. Let's win tomorrow and please support tomorrow as well. Well, Chiba Jets winning it 85 to 65 in game one of the finals. And some more words from Yuki Togashi. And to, first game was really important. And everybody was focused on today's game. But we had to win tomorrow. He had a lot of pressure 
on defense,、uh, offensively, the guardian will be tight. I couldn't make shots really well in the beginning of the game, but my role is to, to keep shooting and try to do my role. How are you going to prepare for tomorrow? I lost twice in Yokohama Arena the last two years. And I want to win tomorrow and then have a smile with all the fans. Well, it certainly seems to me this team has a, a really confident look about themselves in the finals. It's a look at Togashi. And,、uh, they did come out and、uh, they were challenged by Brex. I mean, there's no doubt about it. In that first half, Brex came back、uh, a couple of times from having trailed by several points, and you kind of wondered if Chiba Jets had perhaps let an opportunity go, but they really turned it up a notch in that second half. Well, Josh Bed, I guess with、uh, Utsunomiya Brex,、uh, They've had a great season and they don't want to end it now. And I'm guessing right now、uh, what is being said in the locker room. Well, of course, they've got to look at themselves. I mean, again, I would have thought going into that playoff semi final against the Kawasaki Brave Thunders that this final was wrapped up because of the way Utsunami and Brex have played this season. But you know, Chiba Jets, with the high tempo they played, being very much a Sort of a not, I wouldn't say a selfish basketball team, but they're able to play with so many individuals. They've been able to really beat them down. But also, credit to the fact Seba Size has done unbelievable on the offensive rebounds. That's a key difference between the Brex and the Jets. The Jets just go after everything. I mean, they are hungry. They wanted this game more. Question is now for Utsunomi and Brex can they adapt their game and compete and stay alive for tomorrow night's big game? It's going to be huge. Well, KJ, you played professional basketball in Japan for many years.、Uh, and again, you've been in these situations where you face adversity、uh, like the Bricks as we look back at these highlights、uh, from this、uh, 